As we move into the digital era, it's difficult to see nature as the inspiration for the latest innovations. But one man known for taking inspiration from butterfly wings to create a revolutionary gas sensor suggests otherwise. Radislav Potoralio, principal scientist at GE, joins me now. Radislav, new technologies seem to create an almost sci-fi reality, but how much technology and innovation would you say was actually inspired by the natural world? From an uh, inspiration perspective, there would be three phases of that inspiration. So the first phase is where you are trying to observe and mimic 100% things that uh, are around you. One example is making the small artificial dragonfly. And uh, once you learn about the principles of flight or the principles of navigating through the winds and so on, then you move to the next level. That level is biomimetics where you're trying to not only learn but now to uh, replicate the functionality. And the third level is by inspiration where you learned about the functionality and you devise new uh, principles. So I would say examples of um, such revolutionary things around you will be in the functional materials. For example, the materials with a very small amount of friction that are based on the shark skin design. Materials that are anti-glare, people are using those materials for the flat uh, screen uh, panel displays. Other types of materials, materials with uh, iridescent properties more, um, from the tropical butterflies. Talk me through your latest innovation. We have been working on by inspired designs for new types of gas sensors. And uh, those are inspired by the iridescent features of uh, tropical butterflies. It's a very powerful innovation because uh, it provides us the ability to have the sensors with the performance that cannot be achieved using other types of devices. Okay, so what needs does this address and how do you see it revolutionizing industry? If you think around you, there are uh, a lot of sensors already. And uh, if you think what type of limitations those sensors have and why they're only mostly for humidity and maybe CO and uh, not many more because they cannot operate in different conditions that are required for operation in uh, real time or real uh, world uh, applications. And uh, what it means is that sometimes they cannot operate at very high temperature or environment and they cannot do the measurements of very small concentrations of toxic gases or other types of gases in the presence of conventional interferences, maybe humidity, maybe some odors, things like that. And therefore, those sensors, they are having so many false alarms that people don't like them in uh, demanding applications. So the sensors that we have been uh, developing, they provide much more selectivity and much more accurate responses and therefore they are applicable for situations where accuracy is big need and no false alarms is uh, also big need. Finally, how do you see tech evolving in the next few decades? What do you see the world looking like? Personalized medicine, maybe something that uh, will be uh, uh, coming into play more and more, and uh, artificial intelligence, or maybe it will be some other term for that, but uh, something that uh, gives us the ability to make the real-time uh, decisions as well, and helping you know, with driving cars, perhaps, or other types of applications. Thanks for watching. For more videos from our new economy, please subscribe.